In this video, I'll show you how to use Velocity Filter to get really cool velocity response inside of Beatmaker 2, uh, Beatmaker 3, sorry, on drums. Now this would work for any, almost any app that does drums, um, but since this one is a, a popular app and somewhat tricky to set up, this is the one I want to show you. There we are. So there's no velocity response right now, but there there is already built into Beatmaker an ability to do some velocity responding, and I can do it by going into the sample editor, and I will modulate note, I will modulate, sorry, modulate the gain using note velocity. So now I've got it. But this isn't a very natural way for a snare drum to respond to velocity, especially if you listen to the low velocity sounds. Uh, compared to what Velocity Filter does, this sounds kind of tinny because there's there's so much high frequency and they become even more pronounced when you're playing the sample at lower volume. So I'm going to turn that back off and let's switch back to... Um, let's put Velocity Filter on instead. All right. I'm going to take it down an octave. So um, that's better. Let me see if we can get something more, a little bit more realistic. I'm going to move the filter cutoff frequency and I'm taking the lower limit down. So what you're seeing here, this U, I almost never touch this. This represents what the filter is going to do when the MIDI velocity is 127, the highest velocity. And I have it doing nothing when, when we're at the highest MIDI velocity. And then this represents the lowest velocity, and the line in between them is what the filter is actually doing now. So you can see this is uh, this keyboard controls velocity based on the position on the key, and you see you see the the filter curve um, is moving according to MIDI velocity. So I I quite like the way this sounds. Like I'm I'm uh, I'm not I'm not um, changing the volume too much to the point where when I'm playing quietly I'm not hearing the snare, but I'm having a more mellow tone in the snare at the low velocity and a, a crisper tone on the high velocity. So let's turn that off and let's. I was looking for this thing. I'm hearing a problem with this. Listen to this. I'm going to play the highest velocity, and then I'm going to play the lowest velocity. Again. Do you hear the first time when I first drop down to this low velocity, it doesn't sound right. It sounds like there's a much brighter click at the beginning. And it has a strange attack sound. What's happening here is... Velocity filter is closing down, so here's high velocity, and when I go to low velocity, it jumps down. But the note has already started, and it's process remember it's processing audio and MIDI at the same time. The note has already started, and the filter is trying to catch up to it, and it ends up clamping down on the attack, which lets some of that loud attack through. So here's, here's the filter at the loud setting. If I now start playing audio, I'll be getting that wide open sound, and then the filter will try to clamp down on that and it'll be too late. So I can take the filter transition time down. And that helps a lot. You can hear it, it's almost gone, that click sound, but there's still a little something. Not much, but there's still a little something there. If I wanted to completely eliminate this, this problem, I could turn on latency compensation. And now it's working perfectly. So what is this latency compensation doing? Well, the velocity filter effect needs to process MIDI and audio at the same time. And it's always going to have a little bit of a problem when the audio attacks really hard right at the beginning of the note because it doesn't have time to update that filter before uh, audio starts coming in. 
And so what latency does, latency compensation does is it delays the audio a little bit. It has a buffer inside a velocity filter and it delays it to give the filter time to respond to the MIDI signal before the audio starts processing through the filter. Now this, this seems to work brilliantly, completely eliminates the click problem, but of course now we've added some delay to our audio. And it's not much delay and it depends on your buffer size. Um, but sometimes that's something you don't you don't want to have. So if you're using this, especially in a drum context, and you find that you need to have latency compensation on, I'd advise you to get your um, <clears throat> all of your apps set down to the lowest buffer size you can, because you're going to be adding a little bit of delay, and especially on drums, you don't want much delay. But as long as you have a, a short buffer size, if you can get it down to 128 or even better if it goes down to 64, you're going to be just fine with latency compensation on. If, however, you find you, you're you not satisfied with that, when you're working with drums, it's often good enough, not perfect, but definitely good enough for, for most purposes if you just take the filter transition time all the way down. In Beatmaker 2, there's kind of a cool thing here which is that if I press this button, I get, um, I get actually different effects set up on every drum. So for example, my kick, my kick drum has velocity filter, and I can configure it to have a different tone on the kick drum than it does on the snare, which is nice. Although it's nice, it also means I'm gonna be, if I have 16 drum pads, I'm gonna be running 16 instances of velocity filter. Um, Velocity Filter is a lightweight app that probably wouldn't cause any problem at all, but if you, ha well, if you're lazy to set up 16 instances, or if you, fi you find that having the same tone on all the drums is not a problem for you, in Beatmaker you can also put a global effect here, so I could, I could put it here, uh, Velocity Filter. Did I load it? Oh, okay, now I've loaded it. So now this one is running globally on all the drums. And actually, I, I don't want to do that while I've got the kick and snare running um, independently because that will be doubling up on the effect. There's a way to configure these pads so that the pad will actually have velocity response right, right here without having to go to the keyboard or somewhere else. So I'm going to press the kick and I'm going to Take, make sure fixed MIDI velocity is off, and then put pads Y velocity on. I'll do that for the snare too. I've got it already. So now I've got velocity control right there. There's yet another way we could do this, which is even nicer, and that is we can use an external MIDI controller that has velocity sensing built in. I'm looking for velocity keyboard. I've got it. Let's put Velocity Keyboard in drum pads mode. Those don't look like drum pads. I think I overwrote my preset with something that doesn't correspond. Right. So now I have Velocity Sensing based on uh, the force with which I touch the screen, which to me feels a lot a lot easier to play because I don't I don't control my Y location on the pads very well. So now I can now I can get my velocity control in Beatmaker 2 using this MIDI controller and um, and I don't have to worry about that that Y location type of control. So um, I think this is a good point to end the video. And uh, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more of the same kind of thing, consider hitting the subscribe button so that next time you're watching videos on YouTube, if we have a new video on our channel, you'll see it prioritized in your video feed. Thanks for watching.